going on here today is the STEM Starter Academy at STCC. This is a summer program. It's funded by the uh, state of Massachusetts. The funding comes from the Massachusetts legislature and the purpose is to get more students into STEM programs and to have them complete those programs. We find the best way to get students into programs and be successful in their program is to help them at the beginning. So these are rising freshmen, they're recent high school graduates, they're gonna be a freshman students at Stick in the fall. And uh, <clears throat> we are sort of giving them this summer bridge program with the funding to one, get them some classes, get them introduced to the college, let them meet people, feel that they're part of a group of students so that when they start in the fall, they'll really be able to hit the ground running. The fun ties in in, in, in a couple ways. Now one thing is, uh, you get a bunch of students, or new students coming into the college can sometimes feel a little bit alone. So part of our, part of our goal is to just to get everybody in a group and get everybody having fun together, which is what today's event is about, so that uh, they, they really get to know each other. And now we, we have this, what we call a sense of cohort. These students have been through this together. On the other days, this is the fun day, by the way, on the other days they're in, in, in class and taking their classes, including a math and a, a seminar to orient them to the college. So those are a little more serious than this. So this is a chance for them to really come together as a group, you know, share their experiences, and then when they start in the fall, they'll know they're part of this group and they've got people that uh, they can go to and you know, people they can work with in, in their classes. I had a great time, I drummed a lot. My timing is not the best, but we're working on that. Uh, so we did, we brought in the drumming, we brought in uh, uh, Joe Salins, who does a great workshop uh, with the drumming, really organizes students, gets everybody involved. And uh, the drumming really plays a, a couple roles. One is, I was just talking, the sense of creating the sense of group. And so, uh, you know, when you, when you drum together, it's a natural human tendency. You come together with, over music. There's no better way, I think, to really bring people together and make them feel part of the group. So we have that basic cohort building. That's part of it. On the other hand, we hear Joe up here counting four, four time. And, uh, you know, working one, two, three, four, one, two. And, and so we are doing math. There's always that, that question uh, in uh, math courses, because math is very important to success in the STEM programs. What are the applications of math? And, and the drumming, it's all about numbers. It's all about the timing. It's all about the different wavelengths of the sound that come out of the drums. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of numbers there and thinking then about how something like that can sort of fit with everyday activities like pounding on your drum, I guess. Is, uh, I just want to uh, thank the, the students we have. We have a great group of students. And uh, I want to thank uh, the Massachusetts legislature and the governor for supporting this program, which is a great program. We've really been able to help a lot of people with it. Well, today, um, I worked with the kids. I was explaining to them that uh, music basically is math. So we, I started off counting like one, two, three, four. And I said, pretty much most of the music you hear is in four, four time. But I said, the rhythm we're going to do, I said, we can do two things. We can have easy fun, which we can just go one, two, three, four, and bang a drum four times. Or we can syncopate the music and play around with some rhythms. And they said, let's take, uh, they said, we can do some hard fun. They said, let's do the hard fun. I said, okay, great. So we decided to work with a rhythm called Cuckoo from Guinea, West Africa. And I said, now the trick is, you're dealing with the one, two, three, four. So when I go, boom, they're all like, yeah, we got that. I said, now here's the trick. The West African rhythm starts before the boom. <laughs> so we got the and one. They said, oh yeah, we can do that easy. I said, okay, great. So I go, and one, two, three, four. And anyone can say that, and they did that. But then when they had to translate that to the drums and they hear the different sounds, it changes the whole thing. So then they're like, can we go to the easy fun? I said, yeah, we can do that. So just one, two, three, four. So the first group, we did the easy rhythm. Second group, we did the harder one, and they were able to pick it up. Uh, and one of the things that what's so cool about this um, drumming and drum circle stuff, and it's, it's team building. Because I tell them, instead of thinking so much about what you're doing, like stop staring at your instrument, like everyone's looking at their drum. I said, try maybe close your eyes and listen. And then you're going to hear like all the things that I'm singing on the drum, you're going to hear it like the whole group is doing it and everyone just they got it so perfectly I, 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 it was just beautiful and um, you know lady from uh, 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 another uh, news station she was asking me she said so what does this do 
for the kids. I said, well, it does the same thing it did for me. When I was a kid, I would practice a little bit. And then someone would say, you want to do a show? And i do the show, and people would be amazed at what I did. I said, there's something to this. Maybe I should practice more. So I just kept practicing more, and I got better and better. And every time I go before an audience, I'm, I'm much better than the last time. And so I felt stronger, and I was having extreme amounts of fun. So that's why they say, play music. And I told, the, I told the young people here, I said, listen, you're going to have fun. And at the end of it, they're like, wow, we had so much fun. And we felt stronger because we did things that we thought we could never do. And I said, that's what music did for me. So I said, that's what they get out of this. So no matter where I go, it's just very simple. You just feel better after. Yeah, it's a cool thing. Well, the first thing is I always play for them first. And I say, and then they go, whoa. And I said, yeah, but you can do this. Oh, we can't. I said, no, I'm going to pull you in, pull you into my gravity. I'm going to show you what you can accomplish with this. And by the end of this, you're going to be surprised at what you can accomplish. So that's the first thing I do is I just play for them to let them know what the possibilities are. And then when we do, I do a thing where they all take solos. And I say, I don't want you to think about it. And that's the last thing I show them because that's the improvisation part. So they learn all the drumming parts and they get that pretty quickly. Uh, but when we get to the improvisation, I just um, I play a little bit and I say, I tell them what I'm going to do. I'm going to point to you. And then when I'm finished, I want you to point back to me. When you're finished, you point back to me and then I'll keep pointing at different people. And the first thing that um, some of the students were doing, they're going, oh, I'm not doing that. I said, oh, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. When I point to you, you have to do it. So now they're on the spot. So the whole group, you know, and I usually pick the strongest, the most confident players, and I can tell who they are when we're learning the rhythm. So I point to them first. And then once they see them do it, then they go, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And that's how I get them to just feel that confidence and just jump in. Well, we have a lot of high school kids who are, some of them are committed to us, some are not. So not all of them are interested in science. So we're trying to get some people interested in science, STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, a lot of them have no idea what they want to do. They come, some of them come from broken homes. They don't even know what engineering and math is. So hopefully this will get some of them thinking about that field. There's so many shortage, I mean there's so much shortage in Massachusetts for engineering and math people. And we try to fill that actually shortage as soon as possible. In math you have parabola shape, which is the shape of that bridge that you see there. And the tension on each one, how much pulling and pushing each one is. So, you know, you learn about them in the classroom, but it means nothing to them till they come here and see it. So that's what we're trying to do here is build that and show them actually the math does really work. The engineering works. We look at how much tension is going to be on the cable, uh, what are the angle is going to be, how much pressure is going to be on that wood, how much is going to sag. So all that stuff they're learning that in the classroom, learn, learning right here too. What's funny, actually, the first person goes to use the drill, she didn't know how to turn it on. I said, you never used one because I've never seen one. So to her, it was like a lot of, to watch, like, this is really cool to see how to use a drill there. How do you put a screw in? So some of these people never done it, and they, they're all friends. We all like each other. We have horse around with them. They've only been coming for a week, so it's not like they know each other for a long time. But they really build a good relationship, and they help each other, support each other. What we try to do while they're working, I try to pick different people to do different things. Not the same one doing because you know there's one or two people who want to do everything. And we don't want that. We want everyone to participate, and we're getting that. Community college, that's the definition, help the community. So we're trying to support our community. And all these kids come from our community, from this area. We don't have that many people come to us from outside. We talk to companies, what do you need? What kind of training do you need? We have the technology program that actually offer classes to a lot of companies, local companies. Engineering, that's what I teach. A lot of our students will transfer to a four-year college like UMass, Western New England University, and other schools, get their degree and get a job, hopefully in this area. I grew up in this area. I've been here since 1977. Uh, we like to support the area. The area has been wonderful to us. Springfield has been awesome to us. So we're trying to pay back. That's a suspension bridge. These are the most common bridges that you see in poor country. Uh, if you want to cross a river, you probably notice in these poor countries they throw a rope attach a couple of pieces of wood to it and walk on it. That's what we're building. But they have to understand, if you put a piece of wood, it's going to sag in the middle. So what these cables are going to do, as we walk on them in a few minutes, we're going to walk on that bridge. Those cables are actually going to keep you from sagging. Because if you don't put these cables, they're going to collapse. So that's what we're hoping to, they learn from it about 
okay, what kind of cable to use? How much pressure can I put on it? What kind of wood to use for that beam? Because if that beam is not strong enough, it will bend and snap. So I hope we did a good job designing this before we came here. What I tried to do with them yesterday, just to show them the math really works, is do all the calculations before we came here. So everything was waiting for us in pre-cut right here to show them the math does work, the engineering does work. We'll know in a few minutes if it's going to work or not when we walk on it. You know. Well, actually, tons of construction behind us. So if you come to the campus in five years, you won't even recognize what's going on here. And those people are actually always looking for people to work for them. We get uh, emails all the time. Is anyone interested in a full-time job helping? So hopefully some of these people will end up working on these projects. You know. But this has been awesome. Um, I'm really thrilled about what the kids are doing. They're learning from it. Um, just, I mean, yesterday alone, I have two people came and told me they want to change major to engineering, and I switched their major yesterday. And that's our goal. If we get 10% of these people to think about science and engineering, we did our job. The Commonwealth of Mass, we have about 45,000 employees right now in engineering and science over the age of 55. These people are going to be retired in the next five years. We need to fill these positions as soon as possible. So that's what we hope, and actually we can get these people interested in that so they don't go outside, outsource. We need to get people from Massachusetts to get these jobs working for us. I'm one of the teachers in the STEM program this summer, and so a lot of these students have me in math class. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're learning about parabolas, we're learning about the math involved in building bridges like this. And so we wanted to put this to some practical use. So I'm here today just helping out my students, having a good time, doing some uh, team building activities, and a chance for them to get to know me better, and me to get to know them better, and them to get to know each other better. The students are building a suspension bridge and they're learning um, how to use measurement, um, how a bridge can come together and specifically um, about the shape of the bridge and why it's important and why so many bridges are shaped that way. They have a special shape called a parabola um, which is a very sturdy shape um, and the curvature in the bridge will actually lend a lot of support and it will give it a, it'll be able to make it bear weight. Who said you're supposed to have fun at school, right? Um, so we're trying to we're trying to show them that math and physics are exciting and cool and interesting and all around us everywhere. And so we wanted to make this project really fun uh, to get to give them the feeling that you know you can be out there in the world doing something and actually using this information. A lot of our students have come in uh, maybe not knowing what they want to do, um, but being a technical school, uh, this is a great place for them to get the skills that they need in the workforce. Um, a lot of jobs, uh, there are a lot of jobs out there, but people don't know how to do them. They don't have the right technical skills to be able to do them. So, um, you know, uh, being here is great for them to, we have programs in construction. Um, we have programs in civil engineering, and so yeah, hopefully when they take a look at all of the the building that's going on here, uh, maybe some of them it'll pique an interest, and uh, they'll continue to pursue a degree uh, in something like civil engineering. I think today is uh, is one of those days for students to discover how capable they are, um, and how uh, how they can actually use and apply math in the real world. And um, some people are really hands-on people, and they don't start to get an appreciation for the subject until they can see it happening in front of them. And uh, I'm really hoping that a, a lot of my students have told me that they're starting to feel like they got math better than they ever have, and so that was really nice to hear. And I'm hoping that a lot of more of them come on over to the dark side, if you will. <laughs> As a U.S. Fish and Wildlife intern, my goal is to educate minorities and Hispanics, like a majority of the time, on fish and wildlife and restoration and conservation. Um, I partner with Hispanic Access Foundation, and that's totally aimed just for like Hispanics and minorities. And we even have a Latino Conservation Week coming up July 15th through the 22nd all over um, the United States and it's focused on educating Latinos and promoting conservation, restoration. I was actually not a STEM kid. Um, growing up, um, I'm from New York City so I grew up in like the urban environments and there's not that really much like forest around where I'm from. So um, I did a program, a summer program with City Parks Foundation and that got me into the science and into gardening and like urban gardening. and. 
So from there, I was like, wow, I really enjoy what I do, and I enjoy working with kids and educating them. So once I got into college, I looked for internships, and I found one with Hispanic Access Foundation and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and here I am today. It's, they're great fields to go into because like, not only are there job opportunities, but you get to do a variety of things. Like for U.S. Fish and Wildlife, my job, like I said, is to educate, but with science, I can like, either be like an officer and like, work to protect these animals. I can do research. I can work with invasive species. So like, science is all over, and like, there's so many fields you can go into just for like, being in the science field. So STEM, uh, so it, what it means, uh, science, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics, and what it means to me, um, uh, I don't know, so it, it fills uh, a purpose for my life, right? So um, STEM is, is everything to me because it, it, it explains everything about this world that I didn't understand at one point, and um, it's the career path that I'm going to be going down in the future. Um, I'm highly motivated to become an engineer, and uh, I'm definitely not letting anything get in the way of that. So, so I, and that's exactly what I want for all these kids here, too. Engineers, we build bridges, right? So, I mean, we're building a bridge because these are all s starter engineers. Uh, just like, just like when you're on a baseball team, you go to practice, right? So that's that's what, we'll, how we're trying to um, portray it here. Um, these guys aren't entirely sure what they're doing yet, but they have an idea, and we're just trying to spark that idea so that they can figure it out for themselves. Learning is fun as long as you're learning, you know, what 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 fits with you. Um, all the hard work that I've done here at Stick, you know, it's it's been fun as far as you know the learning has gone. Um, every time I learn something new, it's like I get a thrill out of it. So and I'm just, I, I can see that in some of these students when I'm tutoring them, I can, I can see that they 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 enjoy it when they understand it. It's 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 the things that we don't understand that that drive us crazy. So it's just a matter of figuring that thing out, right? They claim that they're bad at math. It's, it's really, I feel like they just haven't put too much time to really try and understand math. Um, when I got out of high school, I wasn't a good math student until I really came here and I sat down and I was like, if I'm gonna be an engineer, I have to know math. So so I you know, I took the time to, to take all, all the, the fundamental math courses and that now I'm taking advanced math courses and it's, it's just like it's second nature to me, so. Um, but all, all these students, you know, some of them, when I start tutoring them, you know, it's hard to get through to them at first, but they always end up, you know, falling through, and they always end up understanding it. Um, the things they didn't understand at the beginning, that's, that's just because it's the beginning. That's why. Uh, to an incoming student here at STIC, yeah. um, STEM starter program is a huge, definitely uh, worthwhile experience and an opportunity, and, and STIC alone is just you know, full of opportunity. Uh, if I had to do this whole college process over again, I would still come to STIC, you know, if not, maybe even take college courses while I was in high school if I could but um, I see some students doing that here and I'm glad that they got the opportunity to do that but no stick is it's definitely in a, uh, it's an A1 decision and you can't go wrong with it. It's a new approach to learning we teach everything they need to do in a fun way that can be retained so they have fun they make friends they learn concepts like for today in the build bridging <clears throat> they learned a lot of physics today and mathematics, and they actually did it. And you saw how much uh, cheer and laughter that went into it. And they made, they made friends. They used the drill. Some used the drill for the first time. Participating, it's all about my students. If they succeed, it, I do the happy rain dance every day. You know, if they succeed, their they success is my happiness. And when they get it, you know, so I would, we would use anything we can to convey uh, the, the concepts in a fun way so that they succeed and they know themselves and they know their future. The focus of this day is to nurture friendships and to nurture confidence among the students to bring the parents in. Because we feel if the parents are involved in the education, they, they have a higher rate of success as completing uh, their classes here and getting their degrees.